Boom. What's up, fam? Anthony Johnson here today, co-founder of the Red Band Group, CEO of 21 Studios, 21 Convention, 22 Convention, 21 University, 10,000 other things on the internet. Here with 100% Toxic Masculinity today from our editing suite. Uh, I had some technical issues with StreamYard and browsers and bullshits. I'm in the different office today. Anyway, before we get into today's show, a very special episode of the Red Man Group. We're going to roast all these fraudulent fucking losers who pretend to be alpha males, but in real life are complete loser beta males. We're going to have a commercial where we talk about real alpha males at the 21 convention. We're going to have a lot of alpha males, even the female there. You can see the uh, superstar Janice Femengo on the right at 22 convention for the ladies, of course. We don't have any women explaining at 21 convention. Anyway, it's 15 year anniversary coming up soon. 53 days out from uh, you know today. It's going to be three conferences in one. We have the 21 convention for men. You're going to see several speakers at that event on the stream today, including John Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyles and Alex from Playing With Fire. I'll be there, of course, too. We have the 21 convention patriarch edition for fathers going on at the same time. A lot of savage speakers for fathers. And of course, if you are a female, and you have a tiny female brain, you should go to the 22 convention, but we'll make you great again. We'll make a woman great again, but all of the news, all that crazy shit. And real media, see, we don't even pay for this. This is people that attack us, like Blaze TV, the New York Times, stuff like that. So come on out, have a good time. If you're a female, go to this event. If you're a man, go to this event. And if you're a father, go to this event. There is a early bird ticket sale going on until September 1st, so that goes. that's a couple days from now. Price goes up. And then a few weeks after that, in like middle of September, the price will go even higher. So the sooner you buy, the more you save. I appreciate it. That's it for the commercial. Please help me welcome to the show, Mr. Alex from Playing With Fire and John Hello. Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyles. What's up, homies? How you doing? Hey, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, doing pretty good. I'm excited to uh, go into the fake and fraud fucking fiasco disaster of the century. Uh, like you guys, I've been watching that shit go down, you know, for what a week and a half now or something like that. And uh, it's just, it's so, it's so nice and amazing to watch. And it's like really, <laughs> very, it's very entertaining, you know? Like, yeah, dude. So, what are you guys' initial impressions of what happened? And for any fans too that haven't seen this, maybe you guys can go over some of the basics of what you've seen. I've been trying to keep up with it. There's so much uh, delusional, fucking crazy shit. It's hard to even keep up. It's like My a train wreck happening in slow motion. <laughs> Yeah, my last 10 videos were on, on this shit. I like need to get back to the dating content. But basically, I I've, I think the most fascinating thing to me is that they even got in, into this position anyways. And they're still going to have a huge following even after all this. But it really it really goes to show that anyone out there in the internet, you know, with the, with the age of the internet can go online and say anything. Yeah. And yeah, if you look at my, some of my last thumbnails there. Um, and they can get away with it even when they've been outed. And, and yeah. they can be outed all over YouTube and still get away with it. So, you know, and, and they, they've just gone on camera with their defense. Oh, yeah, we've never lied. We never scammed. <laughs> There's objective evidence of them lying everywhere mm -hmm. and scamming everything and just creating a whole fake image. Basically, if anyone doesn't know the backstory, it's two guys that suck with chicks that went on and, and claimed to be ultimate experts with chicks and then just regurgitated red pill nonsense. They're just parroting stuff from Rolo and Kevin Samuels. And just, you know, just repeating that same stuff over and over, which is pretty toxic. And they're, they're making like a big cult of men uh, hate women, be confrontational with women, despise women, et cetera. And I speak to a lot of these guys on the phone. Yeah. Like, hey, I just a lot of this comment content. I still don't get girls, but now I actually hate, you know, they, they don't like chicks anymore. They're not, not in the sense that like they're gay, but they, it's like a war <laughs> they're, they're, they're making where like they're, yeah. they're against they're against female and there's no reason to be like that guys that actually get hot chicks know that there's no reason to have this war and that, you know, and, and, and now that it's just, it's coming to the forefront. I called them out immediately way back when they first came on the scene. Oh yeah. Everyone called me a hater for six months and said, I'm just yep. jealous and yep. all this crap. I remember John, we were talking before the show went that when you and I first talked on one-on-one -on -one months ago, <laughs> probably like February or March or whatever it was this year, I think you asked me about fresh and fit. And I had pretty much the same opinion as you. It's like they're, I think Myron's kind of retarded, like autistic or Spurgy or something. And they're both frauds. Like that, that's pretty obvious that they're frauds. And, uh, you know, we agree. But yeah, a lot of people bitched even at me. And I didn't even do whole videos on them, just comments like that. In fact, even in real life, I went to a turning point, uh, you know, college event back in a few weeks ago in Tampa. And there was this huge thousands of college students there for this conservative thing, right? And a lot of guys knew the channel. They knew me uh, just from YouTube. 
And a couple of them actually asked me at Freshman Fit, which number one told me that they were pretty popular, but number two, they're like, what do you think about them? And I'm like, they're frauds, 100% loser frauds. And these kids that were in the young 20s were shocked I would say that. And I'm like, man, just you know, go into my you know, channel, you'll see some videos on it and stuff. I should direct them to you, but you know, it was alarming that they were so shocked by that. And I can only imagine those kids I talked to that were like 21, 22 years old, they must be shitting bricks now. Because they remember talking to me, never mind if they looked up your channel and seeing what fucking losers these guys were. But no one wanted to hear it, you know, for months yeah. and months and months. Alex, what do you think about this too, man? You Yeah, you I think a good place to start is to give a rough timeline of events for anyone who's not, hasn't been following the, the drama. Because it's like a full-time job to really keep up with all the uh, all the shit. Yeah. It's been highly entertaining. So let's first start off with why did Fresh and Fit take off? So both of them up until you know, seven months ago were completely unknown. So uh, Walter Fresh is working in uh, tech. Uh, Myron. Wix.com. Yeah, Myron was working in law enforcement and doing personal training sessions and whatnot. They started a podcast, it was relatively unknown until they started having girls on. They actually had a pretty good idea of having a bunch of chicks on. The problem is, is that they also started teaching some bad ideas. Like, for example, that part of being a man is like, you know, just getting overreactive and kicking chicks out for nothing. Uh, yeah. They also started creating a lot of fake drama because they realized that, you know, that's what gets views, right? Like people want to watch chicks get kicked out. And there's also panders to a lot of guys who are like not successful women and bitter and whatever, and just kind of perpetuates that. So that's kind of how it started. They exploded. They definitely became popular. Won't hold them against them. So their downfall, and yeah, John has been calling them out ever since. The downfall began with the whole Abin Preach thing. So Abin Preach are popular YouTubers, and they made one video criticizing some of the stuff that uh, Fresh and Fit was saying. Specifically, it was uh, Fresh was saying that, oh, I don't pay for sex because I want burning desire from women. And Abin Preach were like, well, dude, like you're on seeking arrangement, and like, you know, <laughs> you're basically using your podcast to get laid. How's that burning desire? So they basically called out a little bit of criticism. Now, Fresh and Fit really fucked up by their response. So they said, oh, well, we're so much better than you. We get way more views. You guys are losers. So they attacked them personally. They attacked Preacher's wife. And then they said, we're going to challenge you to a boxing match, right? Yep. Then the second fuck up came. When, well, that, then Preach, went at, Preach said, okay, I accept. Then they fucked up by saying, well, actually, you know, we're just going to lay off the YouTube drama. So they indirectly turned down the boxing match that they suggested. And yep. the audience just completely lost on them because, like, I think that's one thing that their audience is smart enough to actually realize. Like, okay, you attacked a man's wife, you challenged him to a fight, and then you backed off. Like, they may not realize all the contradictions and all the scamming that's going on, but they realized that. And that's why they lost – I think something like 40,000 subs in 48 hours, which literally might be a world record. I've never seen anything like that uh, in the community. <laughs> Yep. That's actually, it might be like an actual record. Like, I'd be curious to see that. And so then uh, people started coming at them. And then there was a whole bunch of other things that happened. A bunch of girls started speaking out, like Anna Quinn. Like, hey, yeah, Myron was yep. like, you know, doing this and that. Uh, you know, and then some chick claiming that she's carrying Myron's baby. Uh, I'm not going to say whether that's true or not because I don't know. I don't know any of these girls. But yeah. they had an enormous amount of people <laughs> coming against them, way more than someone should, which really begs like When there's smoke, there's usually a fire. That's Maybe right. the fire is isn't what you what the people are claiming like i'm a firm believer that the truth is somewhere in the middle but even though the truth is somewhere in the middle it's still pretty fucking bad so then the whole thing culminated with one of their former disgruntled employees breaking in and they're basically being almost a shootout yeah uh, came, i think in my opinion came very i'm gonna clear. i'm gonna pull that up real quick um anthony john anthony you did a you did a video response on that right where is that yeah, uh, yeah oh the break-in here's the break-in yeah this is pretty wild this is I mean, Myron pulled a gun on this guy and he threatened he he so legally it's kind of complicated and none of us are attorneys or like law enforcement, right. but this was dubious. But then Myron pulled a gun and invited this dude in and I think threatened to kill him, which definitely negates any yeah, kind he, of self defense claims. Yeah, he like, said yeah, he said come in. It, yeah, he said come in, it'll be the last the last time you live. As what yeah, that's dude, that's fucked, man. Like I wouldn't be surprised if law enforcement gets in on this and like their building kicks them out. I mean, this is unbelievably fucking dumb. Like, just low IQ, dumber than a box of rocks, doesn't understand anything about the law. Like, it, common sense tells you if, if you want to have any kind of self-defense claim not to invite someone in your house and threaten to kill them. Like, that, that just fucking so stupid, man. Unbelievable. The thing is, I don't even think Myron is low IQ. I think Fresh is probably fairly dumb. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be a dick, but it is what yeah. it is. <laughs> I think Mom's actually above average IQ because he went to Northeastern. That's a pretty good university. You can't get in there. Like I, I went to BU. That's you know we're pretty similar. 
I think that he is so in his feelings, though, and he gets so emotionally worked up yeah. that his emotions override his common sense. So initially, if you watch that video, he was like, don't do it. Don't come in. It'll be bad. But then he got worked up. He's like, just come in. Come in, right? And again, like... I'm not even necessarily criticizing Myron's initial response because if there's two big guys outside my door, I wouldn't come out either. I would be like, yo, like I'll, I'll probably would get my gun and say, don't come in. Right. But it's at what he did after. But then he also, they also lied and said they kicked down the door, which, you know, was proven later to be completely false. You know, we have video evidence of that. Yeah. 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 It's like they kind of took a, took a somewhat bad story and tried to spin it to suit their image, which is something I've seen them do time and time again. They take facts and they yeah. spin them. Which is kind of so what they, media, they tried to say. I've been preacher responsible. Yeah, it's exactly. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to pull this up too, though. So I do think Myron is more intelligent than Fresh. Like Fresh is legit, very dumb. Myron has done some dumb shit. I don't know, you know, how low his IQ is, but I do really think that he's kind of spurgy or autistic. Like when I met him, he had this vibe to him that was really awkward and really weird. And th- I see that today on the podcast that when he melts down and he freaks out on these girls. Some of that is intentional to stir up like drama because everyone says they hate drama, but all these betas, they love drama, right? All these girls, they can't fuck. They'll never fuck them. All these skanks in Miami, right? No offense, Alex, but it's plenty, plenty of fucking <laughs> no, there's a lot of Miami. Yeah. yeah. They find the skankiest fucking retarded hoes that all these betas can't fuck these simps. And then they collect all these simps. But then he has these, these meltdowns that I think are signs of autism. Like, like you're saying, it's so open his feelings. It's not even just effeminate and oh Steve's on here too. Oh man, I didn't see Steve. Sorry, bro. Yo, Steve, what's up, man? Yo, <laughs> what's good? How y'all guys doing, man? Doing so, good, man. I'm just making fun Steve, of how fucking retarded. Steve the Deans. Is. Yeah, how y'all doing? Steve the Dean. I, I was I was going through the fucking freshing uh fit clips extensively and I saw they challenged you to a boxing match too. Really? I, I'd love to tell you that story because I, I, I told him on jump. I was if I can't cuss, can I? I just I was gonna F him up. Oh, go ahead. I don't give a fuck. Okay, well, they call, well, first of all, real, real quick, they call they called you that they're making fun of your weight. They said you're a fat ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I uh see I met Myron at the 21, and I sat right beside his cake ass when he like <laughs> like uh A1 was saying, Anthony was saying he was timid, he yeah. was soft spoken, he didn't do he was right beside me. Matter of fact, he was at the dinner table with us. And what happened from my point of view, what I saw was he kind of cheated the game because he came in as a fitness instructor. He wasn't a, a quote unquote dating coach. He didn't know anything about women. He only knew about working out and stuff like that. So he got with another guy, D. I, I, I only wanted to know, mention his name, you know, the, 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 the sharp guy. We'll just say sharp guy. The sharp mama. The sharp sharp mama. mama. Yeah. <laughs> he got with Mamba and Mamba hooked him with the Tomasis and all those other guys where then he started mimicking their stuff to grab all their people in. And yep. then the, the workout guy became the quote unquote dating coach all of a sudden where he learned from the sharp guy, how to create a studio. And he knows the guys like girls, he'll put a few girls around and stuff like that. So we were on a show and they start, you know, because I, I, every time Myron says something, oh, that's not his real name. You, 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 you got his name. Whatever food, our more follow. Yeah. I just call Ooh, dooga, booga, doo, boo, 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 whatever his name is. <laughs> Wait, that's whatever his name. So when our oh, dooga, boo, 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 was uh, talking on Sharp Show, uh, I kept nailing him because everything he said was regurgitated. He was like a Rolo Tomasi. Yep. Now, man, that's that's full of bull. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Because I was I was calling him out. So on the back end, I said I said, look, I told him the guy. I said, look, you a fu- you a effing fraud, and I'm gonna call your ass out every time I'm on the show with you. I'm gonna call you out for the fuck shit you doing. And then he ran to the sharp guy in the email. I can show you to say that it, well, you gotta kick, kick Steve off because he's gonna mess up my brand. And that's what the sharp guy was about the branding. So, but that's when he made the video. Talking about he wants to buy. He never challenged. Me. I told him I was gonna get him on. Uh, look, I'm not here to to, to threaten myself, uh, big brother. I'm just saying I want to talk to him. I didn't say I want to hurt him, but I said I want to talk to him. Basically, <laughs> yeah, without without. But he then said that he challenged me to a boxing match. Yeah. Come on, man. But yeah, I'm fat. I'm old and I'm bald, right? But I'm bald by choice. Number one. And if you look at some of his videos, if you look at the back of his cranium right there, he's going bald himself. So it's all good, fellas. Yeah. 
Would you? Would you? Uh, if it could be set up, would you? You'd still yeah. box him? Oh yes. Oh, on. Jo- I would do it. I'm a 50 year old, but I still got a little bit left in the tank. Yes, I would do it. I I'm would not even. It. I'm in Orlando. I'll box both of them at the same time. Yes. Both, both of these. I put up a thousand dollars to see that fight. <laughs> I'll, I swear to God, I'll do it. If they're watching, I'll gladly do it. I'm in Orlando. You can come here. You're in Miami. I can come there. It's whatever. Both of these losers are like in middle school and high school. I used to see guys like this, right? And I got in fights with some of them because they would talk all this fucking shit, talk like all bark, no bite. And when they get in a fight, they literally go down in one hit. Every time someone talks all this <laughs> mad shit, they get hit once, they get hit in the nose or in the eye, and they fucking cry and they run away. I've yeah. seen this, I've done this and when I was growing up in school, right? Now I'm not talking about some street fight. I don't want to get like legally in trouble, but <laughs> we can find a boxing ring or whatever the fuck and do it legally and film yes, it. Like, let's do it live on YouTube. 100%. You saw you saw what happened with Preach Preach accepted <laughs> and they went radio silent. Of and, course. And, they apologized. Oh, yeah, I'm been, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't yeah, they, they showed the DMs. They said, hey, we're we're waiting. We're, all the stuff, they're leaving them on red. So, yeah, yeah. they they again, they, they talk a big game, but then they don't they don't back it up. Absolutely. I don't do that. Like, I don't normally fucking threaten people to a boxing match, but when these losers do all this bullshit, they threaten all these people to fight, 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 fight. And then Ab and Preach, never mind Steve now, they're like, yeah, I'll fight you. And they run away like little fucking girls, man. Yeah. That, that one guy, I'm not a big fan of the fighting shit, but uh, definitely a big fan of debates. But they, they yeah, they'll never debate anyone. They want to debate like chicks and shit. They don't, they'll never yeah. debate anyone who knows. Oh, that's wish. something that, that's that. amazing to me too, because they bring these like you know middle of the road IQ at best, you know these skanks <laughs> out of Miami, and I, I've seen him try to dunk on these girls like, "Where are your stats at? Where are your stats?" It's like, dude, this girl's 23 years old, and just you found her on Tinder or something. Like she doesn't have a fucking clue. Of course, she doesn't have stats to pull out of her ass. Like well, all the only stats they do, they get from Rolo. There's something that's very important to point out, which I think goes on set. So when a girl comes in the studio, they take their phones away. So the girls are at a huge disadvantage because they're pulling wow. stats out, but girls can't fact check them. Yeah. That's no way to have a debate, right? You can pull out facts. I can't fact check you. I can't pull up with my own statistics, right? And the, the reason they do that is because they're frauds. I mean, we got to just keep make it very clear. These dudes are literal con artists. Like, yeah, yeah they're trying. They're trying to stack the odds in their favor. But Again, Steve no made Steve there. made an interesting point that, that I forgot. Myron was a fucking uh, fitness guru in quotes. Again, he he was no guru there either. Mm-hmm. But he was a fitness guy that that got the idea to start teaching dating from fucking yep. Rolo and, and Donovan. Right. Yeah. It's a whole gaggle of these like birds, like this gaggle of losers and this gaggle of frauds. I view it as like a whole like little miniature mafia of like this these posers. And I see like we talked about previously, Rolo is at the top of all this. If you look at this whole network of frauds, they all suck Rolo's dick. It's all like, it's a pyramid scheme, really. Rolo's <laughs> yeah. at the top, like this pope of red pill fraud, right? And then he has these little underdogs that do his bidding and sell his book. And they all worship him like gods because they're all fatherless little weirdos that have no dad around. I mean, when is the last time you saw any of them talk about their? Now, I'm not saying now if you don't have a father growing up, whatever. I mean, being raised by a single mom is a bad thing, but like they they scream to me like fatherless, broken mama's boys, like Donovan, like who's the biggest. I see, you know, I've been thinking about lately with Three Stooges, and I see Donovan, I see Donovan Myron, and Fresh CEO as like Three Stooges of three fucked up little boys who think that they're men, and none of them are men. They're all just like just fucked up little weirdos. Did you did you see the the new video of of Walter? Did you see Walter's video? Of what did he do now? Actually, wait wait wait! Y'all haven't seen the video? Which one? Of Walter going on an interview and yeah, getting yeah. Ate I, was, up. I was trying to figure out if that was a deep fake or that was real. I don't. It looks like. See the thing about the game, you can tell who has game because game goes beyond just women. You know, you can tell, you know, just his language, his body language to that guy. He, you remember, he was holding a little poodle. I think it's, 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 it's me, is like, thing. he's holding a cute little dog. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, mm, Walter. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if that was a deep fake or not. It was funny. Yeah. No, it looked, it looked real. Grant, was, Grant was calling him Walter. That yeah. was Grant. It was Grant Cardone. They did some interview or something. Oh, you guys see that one? I'll send it to uh, you. I gotta, how do I, is it on YouTube? How do I pull yeah, it yeah, on uh, Kevin Ray Wilder's channel. Yeah. It's going to be the first. Yeah, you got to check. Ray Wilder. I'm pulling it up right now. Because he oh, kind of, shout out to Kevin. He's, he's been also, like John, he's been calling out Fresh and Fit like relentlessly for ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's there it, uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, you got to play this. You, you, you want to have the audio play through the stream? You guys hear the audio? No. No. 
Nope. The audio. Uh, one second. I gotta when you, enable. When it. you share the screen, there's a little checkbox to share. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One Tell second. me if you guys think this is real. I'm like 50 50. I'm pulled up right it now. Looks, it looks totally real to me. It looks real to me. He looks like he's scared. That's what he oh, is. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah, yeah. Defakes, defakes are good though nowadays. <laughs> this this water here. Um, I wouldn't sell it over me. However, since you asked me, I will. Uh, this water here is very good for you. It has a lot of nutrients in it as well. However, at the same time. This water can be or not be important to you. You know anything about bees? Not particularly, sir. Just bought this property in Nashville, and bees are swarming the property. Crazy honey, honey's running down the post at the office. And they wrote me that, hey, we have a serious problem with honeybees. And then they didn't tell me what the solution is. What can you do for me, man? I can do a number of things. You sound like a robot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. You look like a good guy. Everybody in here has been a good guy so far, except for the first two people I cut this morning. They were probably criminals. Now might be a good time to try to save yourself. Listen yes, here. This makes more sound. Here it comes. Okay. Currently, sir, I am developing my skills in sales. However, we did a personality profile on you. Walter needs help with problem solving. What do I do about those bees? <laughs> first, we need to research how to get rid of bees. And, sec and secondly, in it says that he exudes ego strength and self-confidence. Hmm. Do you see it? How much money did you make last month? Hundred and twenty dollars. Thirty dollars a week is what you made last last month. Yes, sir. How much money did you I mean, make? You go to McDonald's <laughs> three times. I would. Uh, you want the ten x rule? I really would like to make hundred thousand. Yeah. My no. goal. Why wow, hundred thousand, no. dude? Done. And get paid. You don't have whatever it takes. <laughs> company in America is going through. we get worn out looking at resumes so we end up hiring Walter and then nobody shows up <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what? this is hey, hysterical hey, this is right yeah this just came out dude where, when was this film is this pretty recent it, no, it it's gotta be old. The show is old, but the yeah, this came yeah. out yesterday I, I again I, I still think it's probably deep fake but it's hilarious and and this is the guy who says he's had sex with fifteen hundred women yes. in one year flat. Yeah, that's really <laughs> possible. Yeah, he fucked up with three women a day every day for a year straight. <laughs> this is, dude. This is this is like massive Connors. I have videos actually. I, I was gonna do a whole takedown video on my own before this fiasco, just to kind of help usher along what John Anthony was doing. There's videos where Walter says he fucked like five hundred women, and then he fucked like fifteen hundred women. That are like a month apart, and it's like, bro, you fucked a thousand women in a month. Like, this is people. The, law, the laws are super ridiculous. Dude, sometimes. They're saying he's twenty as well. In the in the in the fake press releases, they're saying he's twenty now. Yeah, how old is he? What is the real age? I don't know, but he's definitely not twenty. Yeah, he looks a little bit older than that. I don't know. What a shit show, man! What a fucking shit show. And, they're, and, they're, and they're, the new paid press releases that have been coming out the past month, they all say that he's a rising music star. Yeah. Well, that's what ticks me off because, like, I have earned media for my company, like, where we actually had the media come after us for real and we didn't pay anyone to do it. And that does give you some level of authority or credibility because, yeah, like, you got to earn that shit, you know? You got to do something worthwhile for the media to attack you or support you or whatever. And they've done none of that. It's all fake. Like, it's, I remember early on that when John was doing his videos, you know, months ago, they were saying he was in Fox News and all this bullshit, and he wasn't. He could probably get sued for that by these companies for falsely reporting. They didn't. They, it's not legitimate, right? When we do it at Twenty One Convention, it's, well, it's, fraud. it's fraud. I think technically it's fraud. Yeah. Let's he's he's presenting himself to be this like esteemed authority, and, he, and he, at the end of the day, it's 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 like it's like what Napoleon Hill was doing and shit like that. The dude that wrote "Think and Grow Rich," he was just like giving out awards to famous people so he could appear next to them in newspapers, and all, he was saying that he was like. That, that he came up with the quote, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Like, it's like just completely fabricating all kinds of outrageous shit. But the thing is that a bunch of people believe it. Yeah. You know, the old saying is there's a sucker born every minute. But I think in the manosphere, we need to say that there's a simp born every minute. And <laughs> all their fans that are left, I think I think the most intelligent ones at this point, the, the least dumb, they all have abandoned ship. And I think uh, Alex was saying too, he's right, that they, uh, let's pull this up. They've lost 50,000 subscribers in the past like 10 days. That's what you see here on Social Blade, which is I've never seen that implosion in my life on YouTube. Wow. I mean, usually when people come after you, there's probably like what, 500, 600 response videos at this point, maybe more. Usually that grows your channel, right? Even if it's negative. Yeah. This shit, they've, they've fucked up so hard. The, the, <laughs> the media is so negative. It is so obvious that they're fucking losers. 
that they're bleeding subscribers. Like, look, 10,000 in a day, 15,000 in a day, 6,000, 4,000, 3,000, 3,000, 1,000. I don't believe this 1,000 plus bullshit. That's got to be an error. 2,000 negative, 1,000, 1,000. Let's see how low they go today. Like, I, I'm amazed they're even still on YouTube. Do you guys have thoughts on that? Like, how are yeah. these fucking losers still on YouTube? Why are they not in jail or something? Well, that's the thing is, that's the thing is, it's not like YouTube comes in and says, okay, they, they were faking a bunch of shit, shut the channel down. They can still exist, and tons of their followers aren't even aware of how deep this goes. Yeah. Plus, they did a five hour QA giving a bunch of bullshit responses. So now all their yeah. fans think, think that it's just like a conspiracy against them. Yeah, Rolo, I think, is the one spearheading that, by the way. He's coaching them. Someone was putting that for real. He He's yeah. on the stream. Someone reported in the chat today here on the stream. I saw that, yeah. That he's on uh, some other podcast talking about coaching them what to do like when I went after him, which I'm not even done yet, by the way. That's probably <laughs> that motherfucker going down, son, More even more and more and more. But Rolo basically, he doxed over 50 guys in real life to a feminist reporter. He got outed with proof of this, I mean, objective fucking proof and evidence. And then he just fucking ignored it. And this is like the biggest treason I've ever seen in the manosphere, even worse than fresh and fraud or fake and fraud. But then Rolo just kept playing along and nothing happened. It's like, dude, you're a massive fraud. These guys, I think, are going to burn, though. Like they they have pissed off like such a huge amount of YouTubers at this point that I think they're like piranhas that are just going to eat them alive now. YouTube piranhas. <laughs> And a community. Haiti's a huge in Miami. Yeah, that's right. Talk to me about that, Steve. I don't understand black culture in America. Well, well the thing is, is that, you know, when you talk uh, about Haitians, I mean, you, you don't you don't mess with Haitians, uh, Jamaicans. You don't mess with those. You just you don't talk bad about that community because that community will come there. That's a come together community. And it's really large, especially in that area. So. It's not even uh, the two guys that they uh, – I forgot that I pre preach enough. I don't preach. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, yeah, I don't know that, but I what I do know is that that's why he was quick to apologize because someone got to him and said, listen, when you're talking about one Haitian or you're saying something about a Haitian, you're talking about a community of people, and they don't play by the rules of we're going to go to the police and, and write in a thing. If we see you, we're going to jump you and do yes. some damage to you. Yeah, what an amazing shit show, man. I uh, we'll see if I mean, that, is that why he got uh, Walter bought a gun. Maybe that's why he bought a gun. Myron yeah. like already had one. Yeah, I do. I do think, I do think that one. Uh, just to be objective, that one has been sort of dispelled because there's proof of them. Um, like again, like I'm not a fresh and fit fan at all, but like, and they in their stream, they uh, they fucked up with defending a lot of things. But that's the one thing they were able to accurately defend because there's a video of them like actually applying for the license weeks ago. So that one is like kind of a misnomer. But yeah, the other ones are pretty much true. But Walter, that was his first gun. Like Myron uh, Amur Fodol or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but Walter applied for the license <laughs> before the whole incident. That's what I'm saying. But you don't need a license to buy a gun. To carry a gun, you need a license, but not to a buy one. I think it was a concealed carry license or something. Yeah, yeah, that does take time. That's true. That takes a couple of weeks. I've had I have one too. Yeah, it's just weird timing on that he would show it off. That yeah. seemed intentional to show it off and right yeah, in the middle. Yeah, that, that, that was super fucking dumb. Yeah, that was that was just pure stupidity. But dude, what, what's yeah. crazy is like not that shortly after, uh, fucking Amru was having to like brandish the gun when that dude was coming in to, to beat his yeah. ass. Yeah. And that could that could have turned out way worse. Imagine the dude walked in and he, he shot him or some shit. Fucking yeah, best him. case scenario, their podcast is canceled forever. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, he's in jail for half of his lifetime. But yeah, in terms of legality, that is very dubious. Again, obviously not also lawyers, but when you're taunting the person and encouraging, verbally saying, "Come on in," and it's called on camera, like you can't go back and say, "Oh, I didn't say that." Yeah, that becomes very dubious. Uh, I think it could go really just would depend on the judge, the lawyers, and all that stuff. Like yep. he could have easily spent half his lifetime in jail for that for yep. manslaughter charges. Steve? Um, yeah, no, I was just saying that. What's what's weird is is that there they had the guy outside the door had someone filming him, and then uh, Walter was filming Dudubado, and and they were uh, it, it, I I don't know because. If it was a break in, the 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 door wasn't even broken. It was like as if I don't know if it was I don't know if it was. They real. said it was, but yeah, they showed it. it wasn't, yeah, there's yeah, proof, it wasn't, yeah. there's proof that the door was not locked. Yeah, but why would why would you incriminate? See, why would you not only incriminate yourself but film you making threats if it was real? Because then if he left, all he do is call the police. Here's the footage and. 
uh, he's arrested. Somebody's getting arrested, but it's odd. Nobody's getting arrested right now. No, nothing's yeah. happening. It's, it's no, about- I've, I've seen the video. John did a breakdown because they, the dudes who came there, they did a video too. And he, that door was unlocked. He yeah. just grabbed it and opened it and, and he walked in a couple feet and then he backed out. And yeah, so what Myron did, I think what Myron did con- is probably brandishing a weapon. I'm not an attorney or law enforcement, but that's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and threatening to kill somebody if you're inviting him in. That's, that's very, that's all in video too. I mean, he incriminated himself in a, in a serious crime involving a weapon. And he's a former agent for Homeland Security or some shit. Like, I got to say, too, his handling of the firearm is absolutely fucking retarded. Never mind the whole situation. Like, this guy has no idea what he's doing with the firearm. Whatever he did for Homeland Security had nothing to do in the field or, like, with weapons. Nothing. He's probably some paper pusher for bullshit in an office somewhere in Miami. Um, So let's talk about – let's cover a few more issues here. So let's talk about the simp response, the beta male police that have been coming out. Now, for fresh and fraud or fake and fraud, they have been dying down because the public is so against these fucking losers. But you still see simps even now. You probably have them on your channel, John, and maybe Alex too, right? Mm-hmm. They, they still fucking come out and they still bitch at you. So have you seen that, John, on your channel? Like, what do you think about that? These I, think, I, think it's, I think it's hilarious. Guys will say like, oh, you count the number of girls you slept with, you're a simp. You live with 3% girls, you're a simp. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You get your dick sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, no, it's I I think a lot of guys, you know, it's like a power trip thing. If they if they're jealous of somebody or something like that, or, you know, they they want to like make up for it. it's cognitive dissonance at its finest. These guys aren't getting shit, they're jerking off every night and they see a guy getting a ton of chicks. How can we call that guy a simp? Oh, he's a simp because of this, because he's living with girls. But I mean I mean the simps for for, for fake and fraud. Like even oh. if there's overwhelming overwhelming evidence that they're pussies and losers and frauds and con artists. That's the I thing. Mean, a lot of a lot of guys don't even care. Like they just get they just get the enjoyment of watching the fucking drama and bullshit on the show. So they respect yeah. the guys on that on that dimension. A lot of like like we're lo- we're looking at stuff like how can we get guys the best information? Most guys don't even a lot of them don't even care about getting good information. I thought a lot of my best videos about the, about the game have some, have low views. You know, people people want fucking bullshit and drama, and they and they've given them that environment. They've they found the formula. You know, and I I've said in my, much of my response videos is like the Jerry Springer formula. Yep. In, inside a bunch of fucking bullshit between trashy people, and everyone wants to see what happens next. You know, and I see it as like being in, being in a cult. Like for example, if you're a Scientologist, right, and you have someone okay. say, to you, "Hey, dude, isn't it kind of weird that you give ten percent of your income to a church?" What are you talking about? Dude? You're weird for not doing that. It's kind of like the same thing. And they just basically repudiate. So anytime I personally ever critique Fresh and Fit, it's like you're cloud chasing because that's the only defense Fresh and Fit has. Whenever anyone attacks them, they always say yeah. they're cloud chasing, right? Because they don't have to address the argument. They can just dismiss the person outright. Dude. Which is really this genuine, I don't know, counter attack. Their only, re- only response to all my points is that their channel is bigger. That's their literally yeah. only defense. They said yeah. our, our channel is bigger. And the story that's all we're going to say about it. And how yeah. is that? A, how is that a defense against a whole bunch of? It's facts? not. It's a. It's an argument from authority. It's a logical fallacy, is what it is. Yeah. It's a, It's it's what little children do because they're not men. They have like no accomplishments in life beyond the channel blowing up over the past few months. That's so like a very temporary new thing, right? Yeah. And the mob is fickle. I mean, look at how fast their fans abandoned them. When mm-hmm. I went after Rolo, we lost like five thousand subscribers or something. Which you know, I expect that we lose some fans because they're like they're zombies. They're just Rolo dick suckers. So who fucking cares? They're losers anyway. I want I want them to get away from me. But to lose fifty thousand fucking fans in a couple of days, those I mean that's that's just amazing. Like how bad you fucked up. They see through your bullshit now. Is what happened. It's not just well, a disagreement. Well, Alex, Al- Alex was about to hit my hit my point exactly. It, it's a cult mentality. Same with uh, Tommaso, whatever his fake name is. Uh, it's it's the same thing <laughs> where. Uh, you have a lot of these young boys who have the umbilical cord attached to mommy. And then when they take that umbilical cord out of mommy, they look for a male that represents mommy and they attach it to them. And then they follow. So they're like, it's like defending, defending them is like defending their mother because like you say, they have, they, they, it's like they, they fall in love, not like cuddle party love. You know, they, they, it's like a coat, you know, like you were saying at the top of the pyramid, this is our master. You, uh, he can never be wrong. He will always mm-hmm. be right, and you know, and he's just gonna give him the Kool Aid to drink. And they're gonna defend the top of the hive, and that's why they will lash out at these two men right here because 
they don't want to see the truth because seeing the truth is really going to show them for the dumbasses for following them. So they don't want to they don't want to look at that mirror. They rather just hate these guys and uh, worship the other one, man. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> now, just pull up the fraud father. I was gotta make I was it gonna, clear. I was gonna say quick. The same thing happened with with like RSD in the in the dating world. Yep. I've been I've been showing all kinds of evidence about RSD, fucking ripping people off, wasting people's time. But people are are huge RSD Tyler fans, and so they just they just stick to him no matter what. So it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what logical argument. You could literally even even show them like the entire path of like the scam. Yep. And, and with evidence and people are going to say, Oh, we don't care. He's cool. They're, they're so bought into that image to admit that these things are true and that they were wrong is, is to admit that they wasted a whole bunch of time and effort and money. And they were, you know, and they were tricked and all this stuff. Yep. And they'd rather, they'd rather just make that person the enemy that's coming in to, to challenge that belief system. Yes. Just to so, add one, one more thing that I found interesting. So me and uh, Kevin Ray Wilder, we did a live stream and we actually invited on fresh and fit fanboys to debate us. And for example, we had one guy who was coming in really hot in the comments. He was like, you guys are just fucking cloud chasers. You guys are losers. You guys are just jealous. We're like, dude, come on the stream. And we kept like saying, dude, come on the stream and debate us. He finally came on and we we're like, okay, so explain to me why we're cloud chasers. She's like, well, you know, you guys, you make a lot of content criticizing them. I'm like, okay, do you disagree with our critiques? Well, no, not necessarily. I think you guys have made some good points. Okay, so shouldn't we be able to criticize bad ideas? Yeah, 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 you should. Okay, so what's wrong with what we're doing? Well, I guess nothing. And then he did a complete 180. I mean, it was an interesting case. He's like, dude, you know what? You guys are right. Uh, you know, he went from being a huge fresh and fit fanboy to saying, you well, guys. That's because he was put on the spot. It's easy to be a fucking troll in the. In the sure, United sure. States. But then yeah. in the comments afterwards, he was like, yeah, he literally said, yeah, I was being a huge fanboy. Uh, I was wrong. And again, that's an extreme case. Most people won't have a 180 on that. But we had a guy yeah. on after that who was really defending fresh and fit. And it took me like we took 20 minutes to break him down because I was like, OK, let me ask you a question. Would it be hypocritical if, for example, I kept talking about how this best Instagram course ever and that I can just use game to get chicks off Instagram? And then you saw without doubt proof of me offering to fly girls out and leveraging a podcast to get late. Would that make you think I'm a hypocrite? He's like, you know what? That would make me think you're a hypocrite. I'm like, okay, good, because that's exactly what Fresh Fit got caught doing. And there was yeah. like a ten minutes, ten second silence where he's like, shit. <laughs> yeah. And then it took him a while to think of a counter argument, but then he was like, yeah, you know, okay, fine. Uh, you guys may be right. So yeah, I think there's a lot of cognitive dissonance that's going on there. But like, you know, they have four hundred thousand fanboys. You know, I can't like <laughs> debate all of them one by one. I just, well, they know, they now. did. Now it's it's tanking. Yeah, now it's less. It's going to level off at some point, but I was thinking too about the Sharp Mama, Donovan Sharp, you know, Captain Sharp. And a lot of, when I put out the truth about him, that documentary, it got a lot of views really quick. And he took, I think, a big hit from that on many levels, emotionally, physically, financially, the fans <laughs> abandoned him. And I think Fresh and Fit are going through that now as well, except it's like a 10 times the scale, right? The Donovan thing didn't really break out of the manosphere, except it got the black manosphere. And that was about it. But these dudes, you know, fake and fraud have hit, you know, huge YouTube channels of enemies now. 500,000 subscribers, obviously to my channel too, 335, all your guys' channels, you know, 700,000 subscriber channels. Evan have have Preach have 1.4 million. 1.4 million, exactly. And there's there's a bunch of these channels covering it. It's like they have really screwed the pooch on this. And some people are trying to come, come to their defense. I think that's what Rolo is doing for them. He's doing it in a very snake-like, clever way. Because if he just came out swinging for them, or like or Donovan who stayed out of it completely, because he knows he's a fraud too. But Rolo is being Rolo's playing very careful with it, right? He knows how to manipulate his own audience. He's very manipulative, like like a like a nasty fat woman. And <laughs> <laughs> but see, Rolo's smart, and he's telling he's trying to coach him advice. I guarantee you, behind the scenes, he's talking to them every day. He's trying to save them because he wants to ride their coattails. He really wanted them to blow up and then use them as a platform to expand the Rolo pill, his cult of hypergamy and Rolo bullshit and all this fucking his God complex is feed it more and more. And that now is like falling to shit. I think I was talking with Socrates the other day, one of our speakers, <clears throat> and he made the point that basically Rolo is like cancer, the ultimate cancer of the manosphere. <laughs> and he has, and he has like the opposite of a Midas touch, you know, the old story of Midas, like the King or whatever, right? Touches things. It turns to gold. Everything Rolo touches turns to shit. It turns, it blows <laughs> up in his face. Donovan is a good example, right? The more Rolo got tight with Donovan and vice versa, the more toxic and retarded Donovan got. 
and he made enemies and he kicked people off the show. He came after me out of fucking nowhere. And then I'm like, fuck this motherfucker. Look at Fresh and Fit, right? Fake and fraud. The more Rolo got involved with them and he kind of coached them and all this bullshit, the more toxic and retarded they got. Even now, they still suck Rolo's dick. Rolo's the godfather, blah, blah, blah. Rolo's a fucking feminist traitor who hates the manister and hates men. I proved that years ago on my channel with my truth about Rolo Tomasi. So I don't know where I'm going with this, but it's just... It's amazing to watch, and as fucked up as it is, I think it's a really big red pill for the Manosphere. Like, the Manosphere talks about the red pill, and a lot of cases that really means the Rolo pill, but I think that really the Manosphere is very blue pill, and that's what... All the fans of fake and fraud are blue pill. Like, they're they're too dumb to see through the, the facade of this this fake alpha and what do you call it? pseudo alphanist, John? You call it pseudo alpha yeah. behavior. They're all just yeah. fucking beta males, and it's the, it's the sheep leading the other sheep, the blind leading the blind. Yeah. Now that blew up in their face at an extraordinary level. <laughs> yeah, I think that the uh, the manosphere has to accept this unfortunate truth, which is well, actually, I don't even know if it's unfortunate that Rolo is at the end of the day a beta keyboard jockey. Bingo. You know, Bingo. He, has no, he has no experience at all. Like, I just don't understand. Like, imagine you've never trained anyone. You have literally <laughs> sat in a couch for 30 years and you're like trying to teach guys how to be a personal trainer, right? Like, <laughs> would you ever listen to that guy? No, you'd be like, dude, you know nothing about bodybuilding, right? But for some reason, again, you could say he's a theory guy, but how can you have the theories without the practical experience? All my dude. theories are based on going out and having experience yeah. with women and relationships. They're not based on just sitting around like, you know, and just jotting things. Oh, this makes sense. So yeah, it just to me, it's crazy That's how people think he's the godfather of the manosphere. Like, and then That's why guys overrated keyboard jockey. That guys need a, a stricter stricter standard of, of uh, evidence and stuff when these people make claims. Because our niche is especially difficult, where literally anyone with a fucking camera can just <laughs> go on and say they're a rock star with chicks. I mean, we we just cover that with fresh. Oh, yeah. five hundred chicks on the way to thousand. Oh, wait, fifteen hundred. You know, it just it just changes with, with whatever sounds cooler. And they make these outrageous claims. Oh, he's twenty now. You know, all, all this stupid shit. Um, but without without receipts, without infield footage, without good testimonials, without other advanced guys vouching, you know what? What do any of these claims mean? They mean jack shit. You know what? You know what would be really cool, actually. This we should actually put this into practice. We should we should uh, like orchestrate a total a total scam just to show everyone, like document the whole thing. Like oh, grab yeah. a grab a random oh. dude, make some press releases, have him make a channel. And, and you know he he go on and then when, once he has a following we just unravel the whole thing and say hey look this guy doesn't know shit and we just <laughs> did this to show you this is what you're doing with all these other coaches and just because they get a whole bunch of subs doesn't make them any but any any more legitimate yeah one thing that I want to just add in real quickly is I think it's a pretty interesting <laughs> idea budget. but uh, Rolo is afraid to debate anyone who disagrees with him like That's I right. have publicly challenged him to debates multiple times he won't do it. Uh, he won't debate anyone who disagrees with him. He only wants to do like the circle jerk type of ball. <laughs> well, let me actually add some some meat to that. Uh, one second here. Rolo has debated two people uh, that had two speakers, and he got his ass whooped both times. I'll and after, yeah, I'm going to show you, and that's why he doesn't debate anybody. So here's his debate with. Uh, one second, I'm uh, pulling this up. Uh, how do we get this? Boom. So this is a debate where uh, Dr. Sean Smith, a clinical psychologist for 20 years, I know him, Steve knows him, he's spoken at 21 convention several times. Now look at look at their faces at the beginning of the show, right? And by the way, now I haven't <laughs> asked Sean about this, but you know he used to do this before the train wreck podcast with Rich, Rich Cooper here on Rich Cooper's channel. <laughs> to my knowledge, this was the last episode Sean was ever on with Rich. And I don't think, and they're buddies, or they were anyway, I don't know what they are now, but I don't think Sean, I don't think Rich necessarily wanted to kick Sean off the show. I think Rolo got so fucking butthurt in this show, because Sean has no tolerance for pseudoscience and this fake bro science bullshit that Rolo's into, right? This keyboard jockey nonsense. Sean's a real, Sean has a real PhD in psychology. This dude's a fucking badass, right? Uh, so look at look at the face there, and look at the face here. <laughs> look, look at this. The whole thing is like this. I mean, the, the longer it goes, the more crazy it got. Because Rolo can't take no for an answer. Sean has no tolerance for any of this bullshit. And this is just one. There's another one I'll show you guys, too. Rolo debated uh, uh, with Stefan Molyneux, <laughs> another speaker at 21 Convention, a famous YouTuber. Had a million subscribers. Stefan Molyneux brought Rolo on his show. And Rolo got his fucking ass handed to him 
And then Rolo, after that, all of a sudden, <laughs> Stefan Molyneux is the devil, right? Before that, Molyneux is cool. Steve, you know Molyneux. You met him at 21. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, that dude, that dude is happy to debate anybody, talk to anybody, have a level-headed conversation about ideas and shit. And all of a sudden, Rolla says that dude's. A, I have text messages of them coming after fucking uh, Stefan Molyneux. Let me pull this shit up. Hang on, Stefan Molyneux hypergamy. It's not on YouTube because they nuked. Uh, or is it? They nuked it off YouTube. This whole fucking channel. Let me see if I pull this up. Someone oh, said, uh, Richard Coper looks like Zodiac with his sunglasses. <laughs> hmm. I don't know how, to, how the fuck I play this. What is this bullshit? I was going to say, uh, one issue where why Rolo doesn't want to debate anybody, he can't control the narrative. Mm. Exactly. Mm. There it is. I found it. Oh, this is the whole thing, too. I got to <laughs> download this shit. I only had half of it. So it starts off fun. Rolo's all fucking cheerful, right? And by the end of it, Rolo's fucking is this little bitch. <laughs> Um, anyway, you guys can go watch that. If you want to watch Rolo no, watch somebody and, and get his ass handed to him, these are two examples of high profile psychologists, philosophers, like real fucking dudes. And never mind anybody in the manosphere. Rolo won't do anything anymore because he's a fucking scared little bitch. Rolo is the biggest bitch ever in real life. Like, people have no <laughs> idea. People meet Rolo and they're shocked at what a fucking. He's like a little. Like, uh, someone said he's a lesbian. He looks like a lesbian. That's what Steve, that's what Steve was just saying about, about Myron. That's the thing. Uh, <laughs> it, it's like it's, it's this all fucking bark, you know. Yep. They, they they build up this whole facade that they start to buy into it themselves. But when he's not on that fuck in that fresh and fit studio, he's just a weak little bitch all the all the rest of the time. Exactly. K exactly. Oh, I'll, I'll entice the offer for Rolo. I'll smoke a shitload of weed beforehand, so I'll be like one third of my cognitive capacity. <laughs> so my my mind will be barely working, and we can have a debate. We can uh, stack the odds in his favor, and then we can see how it goes. Damn. Rolo really has a god complex. I'm like I've never. Awesome. If you notice when Rolo goes on his podcast and shit and his shows, whether it's one on one or one on with five people, whatever, no one disagrees with him. And if anyone does, it's like this huge awkward thing because Rolo can't handle it. And he just got like in his whole show, probably they're called sick. I think the best way to call it sycophants, right? Like little miniature cult leaders, just rule zero thing, crab zero, all that crap. <laughs> no one can disagree with him. They all have to buy into the his theory of epergamy and the Rolo pill and all these acronyms and all this fucking bullshit about women. It's never about men. It's always about women, right? It's never to focusing on yourself and shit. Yeah, it's such a massive. It's, it's super lame because I have guests on my podcast all the time who I disagree with, and we have respectful debates. I'll debate yeah. them at any time. I don't give a shit. Like if you, as long yep. as you're not like a troll, that's my only yep. requirement. Um, yeah, so I think it's pretty telling when someone refuses either doesn't want to do a debates in the first place, or since a point refuses to do debates. That probably means that they're not confident in what they believe in. That's the only reason they would do yep. it. Because otherwise, why would they not? Yeah, he's a fraud, basically. Exactly. Everybody who disagrees with him is... And if you notice, too, he projects it, right? Rolo calls everybody a grifter and a fraud and all this bullshit. That's what MLD is doing. To, MLD just did a stream. Oh, Abba and Preach are grifting off Fresh and Fits. What's, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about the culture of fraud in the Manosphere. And we can go like a roundtable. Steve... You know, what do you think about, is it important for men to call out uh, and make conflict then? You know, this should be genuine, I guess. Call out frauds in their spaces, like Amodou uh, Fabodoubo. Fabodoubo, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's important because you know, the thing about manhood and game is that game recognize game. Game will always recognize game. And you can always recognize those who have game versus those who don't. And and you you have to I mean, not even have to it just it's just something that happens when you when you're around pipe hitters you humble yourself talk and you you share knowledge but when you get around the humans that try to pretend or kayfabe their way trying to get into the table with the big the cool kids they're just they're the guys in high school uh, one of my boys said the best they're the guys in high school that wanted to sit at the big table. They walked around the big table and all that other stuff. So they left to another school and created a big table and tried to be the cool guys. But the weak, you can always recognize weakness in somebody when you can tell when they get emotional. You see a lot of emotions out of Irolo and especially my Ukudubugu and uh, Walter. You see out of those two, you see a lot of uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of mommy coming out of them. Because like y'all were saying, a, a man should always stand on this square and a man should always be able to debate his points of view it, without without even a hesitation. You want me? Let's go. Do it right now. Boom, boom, boom. But they don't, they're, they, remember, they're mimicking 
each other. So they're parroting other. All they're doing is, right, Rolo want a cracker, you know, right? I see Rolo, right, Rolo this, right, Rolo, you know, so they, they just mimic. So when you force them to get in front of a real person, they bitch up. <laughs> yep. John, thoughts? Um, say, say the question one more time. Yeah, so what do you think about the culture of fraud in the manosphere? Oh, is it, yeah, is it important to call people out for being yeah. losers and fakes? I've, I've got like 40 videos. I, I just did like 10 more on, on Fresh and Fit, but I, I've called out so many dudes in the <laughs> manosphere. Here's the, here's the thing. is like you, anybody that knows these guys, like, like I, I'm kind of like the sounding board for a lot of these guys. Like if say you know these that these guys are full of shit, any, any particular coach, and you have definitive evidence of it, without a channel, you have no voice. Right. So even if a whole bunch of people behind the scenes know that these guys are full of shit, mm -hmm. whoever has the biggest platform wins. And I, I've only got 27 K subs. That's but true. when you put out videos like this another, and then, and then some big channel comes along like Abba and preach and picks it up. YouTube's algorithm shove fuck loads of video or fuck loads of views into those onto all those videos I made now in the, in the recent past. And everyone's like, Holy shit. But those videos all have massive dislikes because for like the past six, seven months, everybody thought I was just a hater, yeah. which doesn't even make sense. Cause it wasn't just my opinion in those videos. I always, I always show evidence and show, you know, support for all the different claims I'm making. It's not just, Oh, I, I don't like these guys. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're not, if they're not full of shit, I don't attack them. So, you know, people, exactly. People, exactly. That's but, really good. I'm glad you brought that up because if I don't yeah. care, you know, if I didn't like fake and fraud, that's different than coming after them for being frauds. I wouldn't come after them either, right? The same thing with Donovan, the same thing with Rolo. I don't, there is no beef I have with these guys. People say it's, they call it, they accuse you too, right? Why do you have yeah. beef with them? Beef. It's like, I don't, I don't have beef with them. There's no like personal fucking vendetta. It's that they're a fucking loser and they're fraud and they're hurting men. Like yeah. they're they're preying on them like like parasites yeah. for money, yeah. and these dudes need real help. Like real I, I hear the I hear the fallout too. The past ten years I've been coaching, I've every almost every guy I talk to, it's always the same story. It was usually RSD, but I, I there's a mix of red pill disasters in there too. Yeah. It's hey, I spent a bunch of time, effort, and money. I got nowhere. I went backwards. That's the story I hear thousands of times. Yep. And so then I go on and I say, hey, look, do you want to go down that same path? Do you want to waste years of your life? And and even worse. Then wasting all those years, eventually, the, then the guy gives up, or he or he starts to get so depressed, or, or or start or start shifting towards like you know just giving up on women altogether. I talked to all the guys who are like, okay, I tried all this pickup stuff. They tried it with scam companies, and multiple scam companies, and eventually they said, fuck this, because all those companies say, hey, you're the problem, you're the problem, you're the problem. It's very rare I can't get a guy very good, regardless of who he is. I've even gotten guys in wheelchairs laid, and you know, game is real. And, and, and it can be taught and it can be taught very quickly, especially when you when you know it really well. And so I, I take I take offense on a personal level when these guys come in claiming to be experts, as anyone should in any craft. Mm -hmm. If anyone came into any space and said, hey, I'm the man, blah, blah, blah. And then and then just fucking wasted a bunch of people's time, effort and money. Yep. You, any real expert should have a very real problem with that and should speak up. But then you That's got right. guys like like Bulldog Mindset, who I respect, that says, no, just kind of take the PC route. And, and just handle it offline and stuff. But I think this shit should be made very public. Yeah. Well, if you notice, good you brought that up because the, the public thing, because they're always, Donovan did it, and so is Myron, or uh, Armour of Fodul, and all these fucking, Rolo, all these fucks, right? Like, oh, let's keep it private, 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 right? It's always private, right? They're the not scamming they're, in private. They, you know, what are they doing? Exactly. They're scamming in public. Mm -hmm. And they don't want the truth. They don't want the sunshine on the fucking bullshit they do because mm -hmm. it shows the world what fucking losers they are and fucking manipulators, man. It's yeah. Sick. And look, and look what, and look what you take. Like I've, I've experienced a lot of the repercussions pretty hardcore. Like I've had multiple strikes on the channel. There, there's been multiple periods where I've had two strikes on the channel. I've had to private all the exposed videos and, Damn. and, just, and just be really PC for 90 days until the strikes clear. Yeah. I've had uh, endless slander posted on, on Reddit and in videos. I've had to sue modern life dating over all the slander because he took it way too far with all the slander claims he made. And then people paired all the slander. So there's lost business. There's damage to the reputation. There's stuff all over Reddit that says the biggest scammer in the community, even though the direct the direct opposite is true, just because I take these guys on. So I, you become public yeah. enemy number one. I yeah. get death threats all the time, all that kind of shit. But I don't give a fuck because, you know, at the end of the day, like, I, I think it's important these things be known. And there's no there's no quality control like I said like anyone can come on the camera and say anything, yep. and I and I see the result these guys some guys are having mental breakdowns guys are slipping into big depressions, we're here to help men and collaborate and and push the community forward, 
and most of the most of the coaches are are dragging it in the opposite direction. <laughs> like this guy. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> tales from the road. First season, hill. tales from the road. Hill. I really. How, how old is he actually? Is is Rolo is fifty four? I think. Oh okay. shit. Look at yeah. look how much better Steve looks. Steve, you said you're almost thirty. <laughs> no, I turned, 50, I turned fifty on the twenty first. But oh, and a happy belated wow. birthday, A one. Nice, you right? too, man. You too. Uh, yeah, yeah you birthday. look, you look, you look like you're in your thirties. And look at Rolo; he didn't fucking take care of himself. Yeah, <laughs> but, but this is what I don't understand. And again, I don't judge men. And please, everyone listen. I don't judge men, but how can you look at him and say he has game? How, how can you look at Rolo and say? He can go get some women. I just it, it breaks my cake ass brain to even try to think about hi I ain't doing I ain't Rolo Tomasi and uh, he doesn't even use his real name. I mean Garcy Tyler, same shit. A little a little yeah. fucking ginger <laughs> weirdo. Like when I when I hung out with him, I took a live program with them in 2012. And I was going around, the chicks were all giving reactions afterwards. I would talk to them. They say gay, weird, creepy, awkward. <laughs> but all the but all the fanboys think he's banked five thousand girls and all this kind of shit yeah and it just goes to show like what a charismatic cult figurehead can do you pretty much can get anyone to believe anything yeah, yeah. yeah. that's with the internet right it's it's this veil it's the computer screen and these this this distance that they get you know psychologically from the guy that's where the veil comes from like when you meet Armar Fodol, myron Gaines, he's he's kind of fucking weird like he's kind of spurgy like i was saying i really think this dude is uh where is it I think he's autistic a little bit, right? I don't think he's some massive. He's no, like, he's 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 definitely super weird. Like when he hit me up a couple years yeah. ago for coaching, and he was trying to like hardline at five hundred bucks for boot camp. I no way in hell I'd ever do boot camp five hundred bucks. <laughs> and he was just saying all kinds of really really strange. Like you could just tell he wasn't. He didn't. He lacked basic common sense, basic social skills. And I texted yep. Alex because that because he had hit up Alex for. I'm like, dude, what's this guy's deal? And, he, and Alex was like, he's really fucking strange. Dude, Rolo's like, the exact same way. Rolo lacks basic social skills. He can't. It, he can't not only can he not get laid if he got divorced tomorrow or something like that if he wanted to right <laughs> he can't even like sit down and have a beer or a drink with other men and just be chill like yeah. i met alex in real life and alex is a fuck we met at a cigar bar i had some buddies he brought some buddies right and we just like chilled out for a bit we had cigars <laughs> and shit alex is a normal human being who also then teaches men how to do stuff with women right rollo can't do that he's a fucking weirdo he has zero friends have you ever heard anyone watching have you ever heard Roll Tomasi talk about having a friend? Any friends? A single male friend? What about no. Richard Cooper? He has he's friends with Richard Cooper, right? Oh they're not, they're not friends. They're just dick suckers. God. They just suck each other's dicks, man. Rich Cooper is less retarded than Rollo, but he's still a fraud. Rolo, Ro, Cooper is just a big uh he's super greedy. Like he's all about money. Like it, it's not only he's he's all about money to an insane degree. Not like some like I'm a badass business guy, what he tries to pretend to be. He's just a fraud who's just like out to get money too. He'll do anything to get money out of guys. Say anything, whatever he has to fucking pitch. It's all bullshit. It's all he's it kind of a vibe I got for him. Let me just add in one quick thing. Um, yeah, good. Because I disagree with what Bulldog Mindset said. Also, I respect the guy, but yeah, he was dead wrong about that. And I actually made a comment saying that as a community at Manosphere, if you want to grow and evolve, you can't just ignore the elephant in the room. You have to call shit yep. out. You will never grow and evolve as a community. If you mm -hmm. just keep ignoring shit and like, oh, well, you know, it's better be just keep focusing on myself. Right. But then if someone gets more subscribers with you, the community narrative will shift in that narrative direction. So part right. of being an accountable member of a community is to call out bad ideas. And that's what, you know, John's been doing really well. Yes. I'm doing to some extent myself, you know, you've done as well. I'm not too familiar with your work, uh, the man mindset, but yeah. So I think that you got to keep doing that. And it's not being a hater. It's not cloud chasing. In fact, if my goal was to gain cloud, it would have been much more advantageous for me to actually be positive to uh, what's it called? Fresh and fit. They live down the street from me. If I could get on their podcast, I would get way more views. Right. If that was my goal to cloud chase, I would just do that. It's not. Yeah. You got to call out bad ideas. Yeah. You got to call it bad ideas and bad actors. Those are two different things. Right. Now, they're typically interrelated. Like the Rolo pill is a set of toxic cultish ideas from the fraud father. Yes. Uh, you know, this guy from McDonald's, this guy. <laughs> But it's it's both. You need to call out the ideas, which is what if you look at the the, the debates that this guy had with uh, Dr. Sean Smith and Stefan Molyneux, that's what happens. They call out his bad ideas and he can't handle it because he's a bitch and a fraud. So then we have to go after the fraud himself in addition to the ideas that other guys can take down. So both, I think, are useful. It's the ideas we got to go after that expose mm -hmm. the truth and then also the individual. And that's where it gets heated because then you have like these uh, a commenter put in the chat. 
these guys that are in the cult, they have emotional attachments to these people, right? They've invested, like John was saying, time and effort and money for even on Patreon, even if it's like six months, right? It's not even that long. They've been paying 10 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month down the drain to someone who is ripping them off the whole time. Didn't know anything about women, can't get laid. Walter Weeks has probably fucked like 20 chicks, right? If that, <laughs> like his whole fucking life. He claims a thou- 2,000 women or whatever the fuck. Dude, there's, there's a whole bunch of shit I've been sent that I haven't even released yet. I can't even keep up with it. People, people are <laughs> There's a dude that literally that pays escorts uh, in Miami, and, and one of them like went on, on their show or whatever, and he's like, yeah, I talked to the girl about it, and like, um, she she's like, yeah, well, we never like had a three. So basically, they're they're just like making up fake claims on the show to look cool, and the girl's like, yeah, we told them they could say that just to sound cool, like stuff like that. It, it goes it goes so far. They they want to do everything they can to paint themselves out to be like the ultimate ladies' men, but it, there's there's it's all hollow. Uh, someone asked. But the about funny it. thing is that any girl who I've shown Fresh Fit podcast to many girls, and any girl who looks at Walter is like, what? <laughs> like he, like fact of the matter is, he has a pretty severe stutter problem. Like he has a very yeah. hard time articulating. Like again, I, I don't want to like make personal attacks against him, but he needs a speech therapist. You know, if he wants to like up his whatever. Person. If he was, if he was innocent, I would say don't <laughs> yeah, make yeah, personal yeah. attacks. But he's a fraud. I mean, at that point, you know, you get what you you get what you earn, man. You act like this fraudulent piece of shit. You scamming out of money, then I'm gonna fucking make fun of you. But he's and a dude. He's a CEO. I I, I I have on my to do list. I'm gonna literally order that same CEO shirt and the CEO <laughs> necklace. I'm gonna make a par- <laughs> I'm gonna make a parody of the podcast. Yeah. But yeah, the idea that he's like a ladies man is just hilarious to like any chick ever that's watched it. Yeah. Same and anybody, with, with anybody R- that has Tyler. game. The same with RC Tyler. It doesn't stop them from becoming ultra popular. That, that's what's so fascinating to me. It's like yeah. you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that in like basketball or, or you know like fucking poker, or chess, or anywhere where you'd have to like prove your real your real skills. You wouldn't be able to do that shit. Well, to me, again, I've been doing this for over thirty years, so I remember back with the PUA PUAs with the the squeeze pages and stuff. This is like a kind of a squeeze page all over again. What they're doing to these young men is saying that, oh, I understand you. You know, I understand you're going through all these problems, but guess what? It's not your fault. It's her fault. It's the woman's fault. It's the it's the trees, the flowers, and everything like that. So it takes accountability from these young men, and they love that. They love the fact that they can't look at themselves, and then they that's the that's the catch all because they wanna they wanna feel like they are about something. They wanna be part of a community. They wanna be yeah. part of something. So they they change the language. They change all this stuff, and because they learn all this stuff, that's when they protect the one because they feel like that one is the one that loves and cares about them so much that they don't want no harm to come to them so it's it's amazing that's that's exactly right though that's that's a really good point is that um they they just want to feel like they belong somewhere and when they don't have to take personal responsibility they can say oh it's just a woman's fault it's an easy an easy way out they didn't have marketers that came into this space like girlfriend no. activation system they said oh you don't even need to approach just get our product and the girls will come to you and that no. you know that happens to be one of the one of the areas guys struggle with the most isn't that convenient? It's, it's the same way when you have like weight loss scam pills uh-huh. like don't you don't need to go to the gym or watch what you eat just take this magic uh-huh. uh, fat, fat melting pill yeah that's marketing yeah. 101 yeah so i gotta get going i gotta okay but uh yeah thank you for having me on it's good chatting with all you guys yeah nice man. alex hey well yeah, alex if you if, if alex is coming to 21 right Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, Alex, hey, get at me, Alex. I, I I chauffeur, so I mean, we'll. I mean, if you need to be picked up, I, I got you. Just let me know. I'll happy cool, to. Bro. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you there. All right, John. Yeah, I'll be there too. Yeah. Same with you. Same with you, John. I, you know, I'm a huge yeah. fan of y'all. Yeah, so absolutely. Just let me know. Let me cool. know. Definitely. So this guy says, "Star Killer Five T One." I changed my beliefs once I found John's and Anthony's channel. Thank you, brothers. You're welcome, man. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, unlike our, uh, all the names are uh, reversed. Yeah, I know our names are so similar. People accuse me of being you all the time. I'm like I'm not. <laughs> well, people call me. Yeah, people. I think a lot of people from other countries too. They say they like say surnames first. Mm-hmm. So people call me Anthony all the time. I don't know if you get called John all the time, but uh, I get called Andrew a lot actually. I don't know why. It's weird. <laughs> but and I appreciate this guy saying this because, like, man, I actually I've been in this community for 15 years, uh, over 15 years, really, since 2005 when I found the PUA community, and I actually care about it. I care about the issues. I care about when I was young, especially when I stuck with chicks, I cared about getting better with chicks, putting my dick in women. And that takes effort and time and skill and repetition and like learning, learning through experience in my case, as well as studying, you know, throughout the community and stuff, writing, dude, I've written probably like 500 pages of fucking field reports back in the day. 
trying to figure out, you know, tricks, trying to figure out myself, trying to figure out how to navigate, you know, bars and nightclubs and shit. These losers on these podcasts, like the the Fraud Father and Fake and Fraud and the Sharp Mama and all these fucking faggots, uh, they have none of that. They have no experience with women in any way, shape, or form. It's all bullshit. It's all scam to get money out of you guys. It's sick, man. It's really sick. And the fact that they not only are frauds in and of itself, which is bad, they pretend to care about men. They pretend to care about <laughs> the manosphere. They pretend to care about the community. That's the sickest thing of all is they actually care to, like, they pretend to care about uh, all these other more, uh, I mean, it's how you put it, ephemeral issues. You know what I mean? Like these, like, these very abstract issues, right? Feminism and masculinity and the family and fatherhood. It's yes. all fucking bullshit. They don't give a fuck about any of it. That's what these, I think that's what fake and fraud are really exposing. Yeah. It's, it's, they are such frauds at such a massive level that a lot of guys' heads are exploding, right? They're like, I can't believe these guys aren't for real. They're not legit. When they've said, oh, we care about men, we care about helping you and all this fucking bullshit. We're gonna help you with your credit now. They have videos on like credit cards and shit now. It's like, this has gotten so fucking out of control. Like, I'm really glad they fucked up so bad, you know? And they got Ab and Preach to come in big, big swinging with that shit. Like that was like John had great videos on him for months, and we talked about him too in here on the Redman group. What videos? But then you had these giant channels come in like nuclear weapons, just bombing them with videos, man. I hope they get kicked off YouTube straight up. I don't give a fuck at this point. These motherfuckers are so toxic and so scammy and so fraudulent. No mercy, man. Fuck. Well, dude, I mean that that gun situation. I mean that's exactly that's getting, that's getting pretty close. You know, they're, they're basically like a standoff about to be a shooting broadcast yeah. on YouTube. There's no way that's the last time that kind of shit's going to happen either. All they do is fucking drama market. All the shock, you know, what do you call it, Jerry Springer stuff, right? Like, eventually, someone's going to get punched. Some chick's going to get hit. So, you know, someone's going to fucking fall off the balcony. Someone's going to shoot a gun. They're going to get their ass beat by Haitians or something in Miami. Mm -hmm. Like, these dudes are, are, a, are a world whirlwind or a whirlpool that's down with, like, a toilet flushing of just loser, fake, fraudulent, hyper-aggressive, ridiculous beta bullshit. Uh, yeah. Only, only rivaled by Donovan, the sharp mama, as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about the other frauds in the manosphere. Someone was asking about Aaron Clary. So, if you guys want to ask about frauds like by name, I'll go into it. But, some, uh, John, do you have any thoughts on Aaron Clary before I get into? I'm not, too, I'm not too familiar with him, to be honest. Either. He hangs out with, uh, you know, the fraud father and all these guys. He was on Fresh and Fit a lot. Uh, I get, I get sent so much shit though, because I'm like the one channel that fucking yeah. tells everything pretty raw on these dudes. I don't hold anything back, so people send me all kinds of shit. If I search my email, continue discussion. I'll tell you what people told me about him. Sure. Yeah, his name is uh, Aaron Clary. I've known him for a while. Like he's, he was a blogger back in the day. I think if I had to go left or right on it, I think I would lean fraud on Aaron Clary because he hangs out with so many fucking. He's like not. He's not a massive fraud like the Fraud Father and Donovan and shit, but I think he's like basically a secret beta male, gamma male, and he's just like a keyboard jockey. And so he attracts a lot of beta male simps, like that they're also with the fake and fraud people and the Fraud Father. That's why he hangs out with them. Birds of a feather flock together, right? If you're not a fraud, you tend to get away from Tomasi pretty quickly, right? You know, wh whether it's uh, him fighting with Stefan Molyneux, or obviously he was with me for just a couple years, and I'm like, fuck this loser. And I have videos from 2017, way back in the day, 2017. I said it right in front of Rolla's face. I said on stage at 21 convention, this guy is either like absolute genius or a completely fraudulent bullshitter. I said that right to his face back in 2017. Because even back then, when I was first getting to know him, I was on the fence. I was like, this is either really cool like theory or it's just absolutely some loser pretending to be some theory badass like a keyboard jockey. Like back in the POA community, that's what we call these guys, right? All they did was write. They never went out, never banged any chicks, never did anything. They would just write and write and write and write endlessly like they're fucked up in the head. Who's Fraud Father? <clears throat> Who are some other frauds we should get into? Uh, we got, for example, here your whole fraud list, uh, John Anthony. It's pretty nice. A really nice, clean list of frauds. Oh, man, uh, Derek Moneyberg is one of the biggest frauds I've ever seen. Holy shit. That dude is mega fraud. Do you think Derek Moneyberg's a bigger fraud than fake and fraud, fresh and fit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're both they're both lying about a lot of stuff, but what came out from the the Derek thing, and he has like an active lawsuit uh, going right now again against one of the guys. Um, which you know, I don't want to, I don't want to. It's not me, but basically, I don't. I'm gonna be careful what I say, but um, 
it was revealed from someone that worked on the inside that he writes none of his fucking content for his courses. He hires like 19, 20 year old kids to just grab stuff off the internet, right? So it's regurgitated shit. But then what they're doing is they're creating homework for these guys to create problems that didn't exist that their upsells can solve. And they're just trying to extract as much money as possible with these guys. They're trying to use high pressure sales tactics, predatory lending, and coerce these guys into just getting as as much as many loans as they can and sign up for as many of these programs as they can. And on their live programs, it's it, the the dating uh, coaches are just sales guys and that are just trying to upsell them on two more programs. The whole thing is just one big money grab. And when they get on the the lives every week for the course, it's just to upsell more products. Everything's just centered around upselling, and then and then he's doing you know buying fake press releases on Forbes. He's doing um, yep, what's it called? Uh, you know buying all the followers on Instagram. He went from like zero followers in May of last year to now over two point five million. Wow. And you know the thing is is like, it, how do you stop that? So there's a class action lawsuit uh, going currently that that hasn't been served on him yet, but is in the works. Nice. And basically, you just need a whole bunch of the victims to come forward tell their stories, you know, they can either willingly have the people involved creating the content, tell the, tell what's going on, or they can subpoena them. But a lot of this stuff has to be handled legally. Like the modern life dating, saying all that shit, I can make response videos, but I'm also, uh, he's been served with a lawsuit and that's ongoing because he just went and made like 30 slander claims. Dude, I had to file a lawsuit as well this year against two former speakers because of the Donovan shit. Like that's how I had to file for the first time in my life. I had to file a lawsuit against somebody, you know? And yep. that's not even over. There's more to the first hearing is on August 30th and like on Monday, right? You have to go to court and all this bullshit. It's going to go on for months and months and months because these idiots fuck around and find out and they associate with frauds and do all this dumb shit. It's sick, man. It's really sick. I mean, it's a whole, I would say like, John, we talked about this a while ago and maybe Steve can comment too. Like I would say at least 70% of the Manosphere content creators are frauds. Like on, on some on some level, there's different degrees of this. Like the fraud fathers at the top, Derek Moneyberg is a massive fucking fraudulent fuck up. The fake and fraud, obviously, this is this huge blow up. But really, it's like so many of these dudes, there's losers in real life. Aaron Clary is a good example, I think. It's just like a negative, someone called him a nihilistic fucking loser. And that pretty much sums it up. It doesn't mean he wants to hurt men. I mean, there's different, there's different like predatory levels of this, you know? That's what I see. Some guys are just pussy pussies and there's bullshitters. Some guys are really hardcore scammers that really like they, they get guys, like you said, I've heard of that too. Even years ago, I'd heard of that. Their sales guys would encourage guys to take out credit cards and get loans just to buy shit from them and get yeah. them in the time. But, yeah, that's well, that's the thing too, is like he he made like a stocks mastery course for 5K, like real estate mastery course. And, and, the, and the guy that was behind a lot of that stuff, he's like, yeah, dude, he's bringing on 19 year old kids that don't know shit about the topic. To train like wealthy businessmen and stuff on these things just by regurgitating stuff from the internet and you know and, and then you and then you dig a little bit further behind the scenes and he's starting off all his company meetings with, with chanting white power and stuff like that and i said all that on youtube i made a i made a video saying he's a racist piece of shit, citing all that documentation it's not slander he's doing it there's evidence wow white power. damn Damn, man. You know, I, I see if I heard Tony Bruno was called white the other night. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So someone's asking me, am I suing uh, George Bruno? Yeah, I'm suing George Bruno and Zach Small. It's all public. You can search Orange County, Florida court records to follow it. Uh, the court will publish all the documents that they believe are not uh, sensitive and are public, which is pretty much all of it. So, yeah, you guys can go watch that. And the first. Uh, the first court thing is on Monday, that's August 30th, and we'll see where it goes. You know, we'll see what the judge says and all that, but so far it's looking pretty good. Uh, someone else is asking about, uh, let's see, Sterling Cooper. So, yeah, Sterling Cooper, I don't know that guy. I've heard some good things about him. He does hang out with a lot of frauds. Uh, I do know for a fact because he said it publicly on video, and we've reviewed it, John, on Redman Group before. Sterling Cooper sells pictures of his butthole to gay men on OnlyFans. <laughs> Come on, man. Straight up, man. That, he told Rolo, he told Rolo <laughs> and Rich Cooper to their face. Rolo was licking his lips, man. Rolo was like, mmm. Oh. <laughs> straight up, man. It's on Red Man Group like 130 or something. Like yeah, I heard I heard about that. That's fucked up. So I don't know what to make of it. How do you advise dudes on how to be alpha if you take literal pictures of your butthole and sell them for five dollars? 
the gay men on OnlyFans. No, he has no shame. Yeah, that's just <laughs> fucking. That's either completely sociopathic, in which case you're fucked up in the head, or oh, it's just fraud man. bullshit. I don't know, man. Well, it's, it's you know that kind of shit makes you wonder too what he does behind closed doors. You know, if he oh yeah, you know, some, guy offers him a, some guy offers him a grand for, to give him a blowjob or something like that. You know, he probably he, does. Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't he? If you're gonna sell pictures of your butthole to gay men, why wouldn't you suck their dicks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. This guy goes on rule zero, the cruel zero shit all the time and gives mice ad ad advice to men on being an alpha male. And step one, take a picture of your butthole with your legs up in the air and sell it to gay men on the internet. That's what passes for advice in the manosphere. And that shit is co-signed. That dude's been on fake and fraud, fesh and fit. He's been hanging out with Rolo on his show and all their shit for a long time. That's what these fucking weirdos are into. That is what these coaches sell. Like that is what me and John and all these guys have to fight with. These people who endorse dudes who sell pictures of their butthole and then give charge charge men for advice on how to talk to women. I don't think women like men generally who sell pictures of their butthole to gay men. But that's just my opinion. You know, I could be wrong. I guess. Yeah. I mean, man. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so it's so fucked. I it's like I, I've been like uh, horrified the past decade <laughs> watching no watching watching who number one who the role models are and watching yep. how bad this how bad the systems are and and knowing from a lot of stuff behind the scenes that those guys suck with chicks like more more so yep. than average guys that's the thing yep. like a lot of the big leaders in the space only leaders in popularity yeah suck with women they're atrocious. Yep. And and they don't need to provide proof. All they do, all they need to do it is be able to tell fake stories uh, in a convincing, charismatic way. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Hey, let's go. Let's do a positive one here. So they're asking about Andrew Tate and the Tate brothers. I've met Andrew Tate several times, and his brother, uh, his brother, what the fuck, I can't even think. Tristan, Tristan. Tate. Yeah, yeah, they're legit. They're le they're totally I, legit. I think they're legit too. Now I, I get why guys would ask this because their lifestyle is so extravagant. <laughs> But they're legit. I mean, Cobra, straight up Andrew, I know better than Tristan. I've talked to both of them a lot, but particularly Andrew. And he has real charisma. Like one of the black guys I was commenting on, uh, like that big jack dude that did the, the walk-in and all that, he was talking about Andrew Tate, and he's right. Andrew has real charisma with women in real life, and you can see that. You can see that just talking to him for five seconds. Like this dude is a fucking, he's a man, and he knows he's a man. He doesn't apologize for being a man, and he's fucked like 400, 500 women or something. Like yeah, it's, he, it's really he, obvious. He, yeah, he claimed 450. Yeah, um, uh, yeah it was, when I, I did a I did an interview with him, and he and I was saying like, what do you say to these people that that say you're fake and all this? You know, Krauser was saying that his kickboxing career is fake and a bunch of shit. And, and I said, what do you think about these red pill guys talking shit on you? He said, I've got a bunch of supercars. They're on the bus. He's like, I've got seven girlfriends. What, you know, they yeah. what do they got? Nothing. You know, they don't have shit. And that, and that really says it all. You know, you don't need to. You don't need to fucking. Uh, you know what? What do you need to say to these guys? These, these guys that talk shit, that have zero receipts, zero yep. infields, and yep. guys will go on my. I got hundreds of hours infield. People like modern life dating and and, and um, Troy Francis. They'll go and critique my infield. Oh, look at this! Oh, he sucks. He hasn't. Get, they don't have. Oh any man, let's talk about Troy him. Francis. I think he's gay, man. He talks about. He said uh, any hole well, he, is the goal. His background. His back. He said that. Yeah, for sure. Wait, I have a video. Oh, I have a video. I'll make a video on that, dude. Oh, yeah, I will. But I already did a video showing he was covering all the gay, all the gay parties in London. Did you see that? Oh man, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I think I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Dude, if you pull up my, go to my, type Troy on my on my channel, and it, okay. it shows the article. He was covering gay and trans events. That was literally his job before he became a dating coach. Check it out. Uh, this one. Uh... Yeah. Just scroll. Wait, yeah, there's this, there was a, that's the girlfriend that he had. <laughs> they show, if you scroll a little bit, there's like the news article, like a tranny. Show the show the news article. Let's see. Uh, keep going a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Uh, keep going. It's gonna yeah, show yeah. like it's like this London. Yeah, there's Ryan Stone's girlfriend. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Yeah, there's Ryan Stone's girlfriend. There it is, right there. Look at this shit. No man, come on, man. Uh, this is what this is what <laughs> Troy was writing. This shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I mean, dude. It goes so deep. It goes. What's so his deep. What's his real name? What's his real name? Oh, uh, John Lucas. John Lucas. Look, right there. 
yeah, former yeah, voice yeah. Of who wrote articles on training nightclubs and gay sauna parties. Go a little bit more. There's another screenshot on the, a little bit further in the video. All right. Right here, right here. This is written by him. Gay nightlife is dying. Grinder and gentrification. Are blank. <laughs> I heard he was on Grinder, man. Tony Bruno told me a while ago. Uh, yeah. Oh, what, how, do you, how do you explain this? Steve, what do you think? Is is uh, Can you give dating advice to men if you sell pictures of your butthole? Is that To me, that's off limits as a... As a convention, a professional convention organizer for, for you know, male speakers to talk to men, I think that's pretty. That's pretty gay. That's, I mean, what do you think about that? That's fruit. We call fruit booty, man. That's that's. <laughs> man, well, dude, cool, why, man. What's, his, what's his obsession? Why was his uh, job all about gay nightlife? Oh, here we go again. Look at this. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's talking about gay party goers. L L LGBTQ night nightclub culture. This is supposed to be a dating coach for men. Piston. <laughs> <laughs> is that in it, man? I don't know. Dude, you can't even make this shit up. Like, if I wanted to write a narrative about these guys' real backstories, I couldn't even do better than this. Their real well, backstories are insane. I mean, look at this guy. <laughs> Let's not forget about him. Oh, God. They're... I thought Donovan was the worst of the worst next to maybe the fraud father. But I mean, yeah, fake and fraud have taken it to new level. I mean, Troy Francis now putting, you know, any holes, the goal and the game night clubs and the piss dungeons. Well, dude, you know, you know, what's you know, what's uh, what I realized on this, on this, uh, our chat here, when Steve said that Myron was just a, a fitness guy, I remember back two years ago, he was hitting me up saying, Hey, we should collab my fitness stuff with your dating stuff. And I mentioned this to Alex, uh, at the beginning of the podcast, he's like, yeah, he was hitting me up for that too. So this literally just a guy that was concerned with fitness that all of a sudden, you know, created this platform where he now says number one dating podcast. Where's he getting his dating information from? Rolo. Hey. Yep. Oh, befriend, befriend these guys in the red pill world and then just regurgitate their information and then claim to be a dating guru. Yeah, they all just regurgitate Rolo stuff. Exactly. It's all the Rolo pill, the cult of the, <laughs> the fraud father. I mean, and then become the sharp mama. I mean, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> well, yeah, wait, wait, how do you explain this shit? Oh, look at look at this shit with Troy. How do you, how do you explain this shit with the uh, with the fucking gay nightlife coverage? You can't. I mean, I'll, I'll send you the video too, where he says any hole is the goal, and he's talking. It was, they were talking about transsexuals and stuff. So that tells me he's either gay or bi. I would think bi, and he's just kind of like you know. But who knows? I mean, maybe he's just gay. I don't know. And if he's gay, you know, that is what it is, but you can't lie about it. It's the lying that's the problem, you know? I mean, would you would you, would you you buy dating advice from somebody if they were gay? If you wanted to put your dick no, in them? Like, no, 100% not. Of course not. Like, oh, man. And how about this guy, the pedo, man, the pedo stalker who, who stalks children? I can't officially say anything else about this guy until the case is really oh, yeah. I'm not suing him in a lawsuit. This motherfucker, oh, man. I created that monster too, man. I let him on the Red Man group way back in the day. I was like, oh, he's just some dumb kid. It'd probably be fine. Maybe he's got some things to say. You know, who knows? You, you never know, right? You know, I try, I try to be open-minded with these people. And and then they put any holes, the goal, and they, they take pictures of their butthole and shit. <laughs> then you got to fire him, man, like Trump, you know? You're fired. Yeah. Uh, John, what do you think about Ryan Stone? Steve, you got any comments on Ryan as well? Ryan Stone hasn't gotten any heat lately. He has a put his girlfriend up. Put his girlfriend up again. Is that in your video? Yeah, it's uh, in the Troy video. Back yeah, yeah, back yeah. Up halfway. But yeah, Steve, Steve can weigh in. I, I don't know a whole lot about him. He tried to talk shit, and I made the, I made a video against him. But I, that picture with his girlfriend, there it is. There it blow, is. Yeah. Can you blow that up? Yeah, yeah. What would you What would you rate that that chick there? Uh, I'd give her like a five, maybe a five and a half. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> bit like looks a little bit like Miss Piggy. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm trying to be nice. I mean, you know, she's pretty fat, pretty chubby. She's not like a balloon, though, like a beluga whale. <laughs> Apparently, that's, that's the uh, the latest thing to call people's wives. Why yeah, is he even weird. married? He doesn't have any kids with this woman. Like, why is he even married to her? I don't even know. I mean, I know this Canada has common law and shit, but, like, why? If you're not going to have kids with a woman, why is she even your wife? Like, what is the purpose of this? This is fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. Steve, you got any thoughts on Ryan? You never got to meet him at 21, right? Yeah, was I, never, I never really got a chance to, to meet him, but I mean, I, you, you, from where I'm from, you don't take pictures like that. That's like, 
I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not, come on, man. I'm looks, just, looks like he's. Looks like he's getting ready to hang out with Troy Francis in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> I mean, look at this. This is brutal, man. <laughs> what the fuck is yeah. this? That looks like a dude. I mean, that looks like yeah. a. But then again, English women are really ugly, man. I like English women are some of the like Australian women, some of the ugliest women on the planet. Look, he's not, he's with another tranny in the beginning. There's there's some like Asian tranny. There you go. There, there, there. Oh, yeah. That's a that's supposed to be a chick. That's some no no, that's some known tranny. Oh my yeah, it looks yeah. like that's definitely a dude, man. <laughs> dude, and he and fucking Myron and shit too. There's like some cash Chrissy. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some hey, how do I find the pictures of um uh, what videos have Myron with the dudes? Go to go to type Myron. Oh, that's it's, it's the first Myron exposed, the second video. Have that, you seen these, Steve? Yes, that's uh, yeah. I, I became a, I became a fan of John and seen that. That right was, here, right here. Yeah, that was dog. When he showed me, <laughs> I saw that. Dog, I, I was like, and, you know, dude, this is this is where I first dropped his real name. What's blurred yes. there is the Amru Foodle, and he and he privacy struck it, so I had to fucking blur it so it didn't get removed. Oh, wow. But, how, but this is what I don't understand. How can you see these real legitimate photos and believe this guy has game? I, you would never see me laying with a dude like that. <laughs> like, like what? Is, I mean, wait, one in the bed with his shirt off. Well, excuse yeah. me, two in the bed with his shirt yeah, off. Yeah, there's two guys in the bed with his shirt off. Bed, John, I got. I, and you got, I, and you got Troy Francis in the corner writing a piece about gay nightlife. But, but, but. but how do you even? How do you take advice from that? I don't. I just. There's no yeah. way. You can. Yeah, dude. It's not even that these that these. <laughs> it's not even that these guys are just bad coaches. There's a lot of fucking homo shit going on. It's a, <laughs> too much. Too it's much. A, it's an amazing clusterfuck, right? It's like dude, a okay. Wait, 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 wait. We're gonna wait. We're gonna get Steve laughing. Wait, go to my, go to my uh, my videos. Okay. Type RST Tyler Gay. <laughs> Wait, watch, dude. There's, I, I compiled all the clips where he's making jokes about being gay, doing gay, uh, fucking motions. Watch, watch the beginning. Watch the beginning. Play, can you play the audio about this? You hear it? Do you hear the audio? Yes. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 me. Wait, rewind it, rewind it. This is really good. Let's, let's get Steve's thoughts here. What we're gonna do right now is talk about how Luke converted me. And got me to come out of the closet. Come out of the closet. Oh we are totally gay, so you know that, right? We are totally <laughs> gay. <laughs> Man, dude, I got like a shower. Like a, my dude, name dude. is Needs. Wait, but watch, watch. Wait, let's go to. Uh, what is this? What the? Fuck oh, I hired. I hired a dude off Fiverr. This, this shit's. This shit's hilarious. <laughs> John. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Go, go back. I want to show Steve one more part. Go back to that video one more time. Oh, where, where, where fast forward a little bit, a little bit. Uh, oh, look, I dress up as Tyler here. I got a lot of funny shit. All right, yeah, so play, play, uh, PD. play right after this. All right, yeah, play the audio here. All right, watch this. Watch who this. Has here. A boyfriend. All right, without All right. further ado, Tyler's doing the chat Instagram. Look at this. <laughs> 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 Dude, this is why I hate them off. This is why I just can't stand it. They kill the game, man. You men don't act that. I can't even. Me, me. Yeah. What the fuck? It's projecting what a pussy is, literally. I guess, right? Wait, we got like a cat. We, if possible, on. there's there's Hang one on. more golden part in that. Hang on, we got to get Donovan. Hang on a second. Hang on. Uh, uh, how do no, we... Steve, he's, we've got we've got video of him like like sucking dick on a straw in there. Uh, uh, guys right, don't right. Do that. like guys that are good with chicks wouldn't do that ever. Never would do that, man. Never. Let's get <laughs> John. You're killing him with this stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's fucking terrible, and it goes way it goes way. I have like a long list of shit that I want to make videos about. There's not even enough time in the day. All right, let, let's get let's get into this one here. This is gonna be a good, this is be a real good one. Oh my gosh! This is gonna be a real good one. This Alex did a video on this the other day. I wish he was still on the show. John, you can you can give me some comments on this. Let me skip the ad here. You guys can see this. Yeah. Oh, there's fucking two ads. Come on, YouTube, you're killing me. Oh, I thought that was him. Okay. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? 
Devin slept with a lot of guys, gentlemen. Devin has a high body count. You think I don't know that my own girlfriend has had sex with a lot of men? You think that I think I found some special snowflake who does, who declined parting through her 20s even though she has a great body? Give me a break, guys. You, you think, think I, don't I don't know, know that, that my own girlfriend has had sex with a lot of men? Donna, it gets better. It gets better. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Where is it? I think it's right here. I love the great body claims, too. That shit's funny. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Watch this. 7% certain that I am not the biggest dick ever that, that Devin's ever taken. And the way I f*** her is not the best sex she's ever had. She's had bigger and better than me. She hasn't told me this, but I know. I'm almost positive Devin's had bigger, better dicks than mine. <laughs> but if I ever found out what one of these guys look like, if I ever found out that one of those guys had a 12-inch cock, you better believe I'm going to be f insecure. You kidding me? What man? I don't have a 12-inch dick. <laughs> Devin's had bigger dicks than her. Now I got to see what that dick looks like. Of course, it makes us insecure. That's another <laughs> reason gotta, why men don't, men of value don't commit to women with high body counts. Like. So why is he he put like? a fucking ring on it, man. Look at this guy. Don't commit. Men of value don't commit to women who fucked hundreds of men. She's had bigger, better dicks. Huge dicks. But, well, the worst part about that is he says, if I found out that there was bigger dicks, I've got to see those dicks. He literally yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah, this, this to me is endlessly funny. Like every time I watch this, I crack up laughing, man. This is so fuck. This is his wife, man. Detox. Look at how he talks about his fucking wife. Because Dude. we know the more cocks that have been in you, the more huge cocks that have been in you. It's just mathematical. If you've been with five guys, okay, all right, we can deal with that. If you've been with 555, dude, you've probably had at least 10, 12 cocks in you that are probably north of 10 inches. Guaranteed. 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 Yeah, I got to go, dude. Y'all can't do it. <laughs> He's the dick expert, man. He's the statistician. We got to show Steve this one last clip. It's, it's oh, really good. Right? Y'all okay, okay. killing me with this fruit booty shit. <laughs> Where, uh, your channel? Uh, damn. Wait, wait. The Tyler, the Tyler one that we, we did a we did a looping clip of him fucking sucking dick on the straw. That shit's really good. Is that the end of the straw video? Yeah, yeah. Where is it, dude? These these guys. The <laughs> thing is, they're like some of the most popular guys in the manosphere. This is why it's so insane. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, hey, I love y'all, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this motherfucker, man. <laughs> okay. This is a, it's a meat show, man. It's it's endlessly they give us so much material. I mean, it's, it's like a it's like a comedy show, man. It just doesn't stop. Look, See, hey, I, you know what I want? I you, both, you both said you a box. You both said you a box Myron and, and fucking preach has, has got the challenge out there too. Oh yeah. Why don't we fucking? Why don't we set it up? Why don't we just? Fresh, why don't we put out? Well. I'll, hey, do fresh. Dude, I'll set it up. I just want to say, set it up. Tell him, yeah, we can go. We can go dip our hands in glass type. I don't give a shit. We can do like Kirk Spot shit. I don't give a fuck. If he want to fight me, I will step in the ring. I will. I didn't. I had no idea. I will do it. And I'll, again, I'll fight them both. I'll fight them both. Yeah, I will. Too. I'll fight them both too at the same time. Well, if that's legal, like, I'm right. down, dude. Well, both of these guys have. They're they're the kind of guys that'll go down in one hit, hundred percent. Well, let me just say this before I go. Hey, John. Hey, man. I, I'm a huge fan of yours. Watch these, man. You, hey, dog. You just, hey. I'm free. I'm your buddy, man. I don't want to be on your bad side of the way. You, <laughs> you, you kill motherfuckers and keep your foot on their motherfucking neck. I love that. Shit. <laughs> I love that shit. Dude, you know, I, lo I love making these videos. I, I'm, yes. I'm thinking about pivoting the channel a little bit and like just doing like half my videos on just reaction, reacting yeah. on fucking yeah. cards in the in the space. Yes, yeah. man. Well, respect to you and, and A1. Yeah, man. Again, <laughs> always happy belated birthday. Thanks, man. My too. man, I rocks with you. I'm A1 for life. You know that, man. Don't Thanks, fuck man. with A1. You fuck with me. So I just want to say to you guys, man, it's been a pleasure. Well, not this last half, man. This last half with some fucking sickness ass shit. <laughs> yeah, man. What's, what's, what's the message there? I mean, I, I, I kind of lose hope sometimes. If, if that kind of shit exists... Also if that kind of if that kind of shit exists and these are the most popular figureheads in the space that's what blows my cake ass mind john i don't under man look look i got a straw a dude sucking a straw right now burned in my eye <laughs> I gotta get off this <laughs> and rsd rsd was the leading company for years man yeah, yeah, but that's it's the gullible, naive disillusion it's, like i say man hey look man i appreciate both y'all man but 
we we're in a battle. We we we're just in a battle. That's just how it is. It's it's the it's the real ones versus the lying, manipulative snake oil salesmen that are right. really hurting these young men while we're trying to help them. So I I I love men like this. And Alex came on. I mean, these are the guys that people should be rocking with. And it's sad that they are following these guys that don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But again, John uh, A one man, thank you for having me on. Y'all yeah, really kind of yeah. destroyed the last second of this. I mean, y'all really made me. I brought us a Pepto, dog. <laughs> y'all hurt my stomach with that. So I'm a, I'm a go, man. I'm going to hit y'all later, man. Y'all be good, all right? Yeah, all right, see man. Steve. Thanks, man. Right, y'all man. Respect to y'all, man. Yeah, man. This commenter said, uh, glad I tuned into this. I learned a lot about the nonsense out here. Fellas, just being your own masculine frame, don't be fooled out here by frauds. Today should have been proof of it all. Yeah, I mean, there's so much, right? We just did a little show on this, John. But I mean, your your channel has a bunch of videos. My channel has a bunch of videos. Thank God, there's hundreds of response videos. And, dude, they, and, and, and they try fire. to, they all try to protect the scam. Yeah. Like I've lost my Instagram, yeah, yeah. my Facebook from calling these guys out. I yep. lost um, my Facebook group. I lost. Um, they try to copyright the videos any any time yep. they can, and get all. And they just try to censor all the information. Anybody dude, that anybody that's out. I have receipts of Donovan Sharp, the Sharp Mama. He he did over forty-five attempted strikes on my channel, copyright and mostly <laughs> privacy strike. Privacy strikes mostly. Forty-five separate fucking strikes on my channel. All did you make a, make a video about it? I'm gonna make a video. Todd V just tried to strike one of mine down. Yeah. I was calling all his method yeah. piece of shit. That's What's the thing. Funny is they failed at all. Of them. What's that? Oh, he yeah. failed on all of them. All of them. All of them. one of them worked on Redman Group temporarily. The video went down. I fought it, and two weeks later, I got it back up. So they actually took the video down, and then I got it back up. So yeah, yeah it's pretty fucked, man. Yeah, RSD. Uh, they tried like four or five times. Some of them went through, but I appealed them, and then I had to threaten yeah. legal action, and they they just stopped completely because you can't. It's against the terms of service to just abuse the copyright system, too. That's right. You can lose your channel real, when it's not a real. Co I started having lawyers review and say, okay, this is good to go. And then they come in and just try to copyright it so that they can get the bad information down about them. Yep. You know? Man, well, it's been a good show. Uh, yeah. Any, yeah, thanks we, for having me, bro. Yeah, man. I think we'll wrap up. I appreciate your time. I'll put links in the description to everybody's channels you saw today. John Anthony, Alex Playing With Fire, Steve the Dean Williams, and Man Mindset. John, we'll talk yep. soon. Appreciate your time today. Yep. And check out, for those of you that are still around, check out PlatinumDatingSystem.com about my eight-week mentorship program underneath my, my face here. Yep. But yeah, I always I always love tuning in for these. There'll be a lot more videos for me on these topics in the, in the manosphere. Sounds good, man. Look forward to them. I'll share them as usual. You know, maybe publish a few, share them on community tab. I love publishing your videos because you do a lot of the hard work, man. That like you're saying, like I do these videos, but I got other shit going on. So I'm like, fuck, man. But then you focus, you, you put the time and effort into it, you know, to do it. And then it's like, yeah, we, there you go. We just brought on a full time editor. <laughs> so it's going to be, I'm going to be able to pump out videos a lot quicker now because I can just make the content. And we had an editor like part time before, but we got a guy that's going to be full time doing all the editing nice. and recording. He's moving to Brazil. So we're going to have production quality is going to go way up, have cinematic shit. But we're going to be able to make some really cool stuff now. Nice, man. 100%. I'm going to do a little yeah. uh, pitch here at the end for you guys. We have a new website called the21store.com. It's a very simple little store. You can go buy all your favorite, uh, favorite famous hats, make women great again, make women pregnant again, make men strong again, make women cook again, make women virgins again, make women thin again. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Where is it? There it is. So if you guys want that, we'll be there's a link in the description. You can get hats, about 25 bucks a pop. You know, you support the channel. I appreciate it. You know, a little merchandise and stuff. And you get a cool swag hat. It's fucking dope. Including the one that I'm wearing there, you see 100% toxic masculinity. And uh, there's also, you can donate, you know, stuff like that. I appreciate it. And that's it. I'll see you guys next Saturday. John, thank you again for your time. Everyone thanks, else, thanks, thanks for tuning in. Peace out.